The biggest demonstrations yet could be about to take place on the streets of Tehran in the next few hours. One of those who will be trying to follow the events is a 22-year-old journalism student here in New Zealand. She lived in Iran until she was five and visited just recently. Laura Turner reports. Whether it be by mail or internet, Shabnam Dadgabi talks to her friends and family in Iran most days. Their message is always the same. They're just angry. It's been 30 years of basically being suffocated. There's no social freedom. There's um, morality police who judge girls and guys on what they wear. The protests against hardline president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad haven't abated. Even the country's soccer team has taken a stand, wearing green wristbands in favour of the opposition candidate Mir Hussein Mousavi at a game in South Korea. The uprising is now in its sixth day, and it's the demonstrators themselves who are taking the pictures. Now journalists are finding it impossible to work. The amateur video and mobile phone footage loaded onto YouTube has become the world's only window into Iran. Some media watchers are warning it's now difficult to get a balanced view. But there's no questioning the bravery of those Iranians trying to get their message out. There's huge risks. I mean, last year a, a blogger was captured and taken to prison and um, a month later he had committed suicide. Social networking sites have become so crucial to the protesters' cause, the U.S. has called on Twitter to hold off on maintenance so Iranian messages aren't lost. We promote uh, the right of free expression. I wouldn't know a Twitter from a tweeter, but <laughs> apparently it is very important. Kiwis can help Iranians by setting up anonymous IP addresses and sending them to Iranian Twitter users. This would make it much harder for Iranian authorities to track and block users. Laura Turner, 3 News.